In this video, I wanted to share with you some reflections on my very recent experience in Qatar, in Doha, actually the capital of that country in the Middle East. And I spent over two weeks there. I just got back uh, today, a bit tired, a long flight and all that. Um, but I really had some amazing uh, experiences and I just want to share some of those uh, experiences with you, almost uh, random. So the first thing that comes to mind perhaps for many people is the remarkable cleanliness of the capital, Doha, where the vast majority of people in that state live. Um, so the absence of graffiti, for example, or litter, cigarette ends, uh, dog mess, uh, consistently everywhere. It's a very healthy environment. And that's really quite a pleasant change for me, uh, who spends most of the time here in London, where um, there's always bits and pieces of rubbish on the street and dog poo and all sorts of unmentionable things. But they are completely absent from Doha. I mean, I'm not exaggerating. I never saw anything at all. Um, so that was a, a remarkable um, uh, experience, I must say. Um, another thing, uh, perhaps more controversially, was um, many women um, in Qatar, Muslim women, do wear hijab or the niqab, actually. Um, but some don't. And contrary, I think, to Western stereotypes of Muslims, and this is an officially Muslim country, there is actually a very diverse range of headscarves and so on. As I mentioned, most do wear them, but as I say, some don't. But everyone gets along. Uh, I didn't sense any tensions or disturbances or aggro uh, about this at all. Although I do want to make clear that as far as I understand it, the normative Islamic position is that head covering is required as per uh, the teaching of the Quran. But there was no kind of brutal enforcement or any kind of hassle like that at all. It was very, a uh, very relaxed uh, environment. And um, while I was there, I had the privilege to uh, meet some amazing academics. Uh, I'm thinking of, of some Western non-Muslim academics who teach at some of the leading universities in Doha and um, it was fascinating I asked them over lunch you know in private about their experiences you know these are European or American uh, uh, academics and I remember one conversation with a European professor of history been teaching there for some years and I said look you know uh, do you have access unrestricted access to uh, media outlets like the BBC or CNN or Fox or whatever and uh, he said, yes, he has. He's always had uh, completely unrestricted access to all media. Now, this I, I found quite surprising because in the West, we don't have completely unrestricted access. For example, RT, Russia Today, has been banned, basically, in on, on a YouTube. Uh, very hard to gain access to the Russian point of view. RT is the Russian English uh, uh, channel. And um, I think it's important that we understand what the Russians are thinking, but we're not really allowed to do that. But in Doha, you can access RT. As I say, there, there are apparently no restrictions at all. And this might well come as a surprise uh, to many, um, actually, that uh, uh, in this respect, Doha is freer than most of the West. Um, and this same professor, by the way, he'd been teaching history for, for many years, um, particularly focusing on the Middle East and the, the events that are dominating our, our, the news and our lives at the moment. He's never been told, he told me, uh, how to teach, what not to teach, or what angle to teach. He's free to uh, give a, 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 a diverse range of views and perspectives historically on what's happening in the Middle East. And I think this is, this is very interesting because this contrasts, obviously, uh, with uh, the experience in, in many Western countries where it's very difficult, if not absolutely impossible, to talk about the Palestinian experience and the Palestinian struggle for independence and freedom, uh, freedom from oppression and occupation and ethnic cleansing. And to actually give that point of view is often, um, you know, can, can result in you being cancelled or prosecuted even and all sorts of horrible things. So again, uh, Doha uh, in Qatar is actually freer in that regard. There are no, this particular history professor, non-Muslim says he's never had any um, interference in his research and his teaching ever in this university, uh, as, as I mentioned. So that that was again, contrary to what many uh, in the West, the stereotypes one might have of, of 
uh, some Middle Eastern countries. Um, this is a Muslim, officially Muslim country, as I say. And of course, most, perhaps most famously in Doha is the architecture. It's another remarkable um, feature of this very small country, actually. The state of Qatar is actually a very, very small place indeed. And it has one border, I think, with, with Saudi Arabia. Other than, that, that, other than that, it's just surrounded by the Gulf. Um, but the skyline in, in um, and I'll show some pictures now, in Doha is quite extraordinary. It's uh, A lot of it is very futuristic. Um, and at, not, at night, it's all lit up in, in very creative, I think, very intelligent and interesting ways, not just like spotlighted. There, there, there's very sometimes quite witty motifs going on in some of the buildings. But also a juxtaposed with that at the same time, we still have some traditional Muslim architecture as well. And that was really beautiful to see some stunning uh, Muslim uh, uh, Islamic architecture is, is still promoted uh, there as well. So you have this kind of diverse range of styles from the very, very cutting edge futuristic to some very beautiful traditional uh, Islamic architecture. So that was very pleasant to, to see as well. Another thing that um, struck me, actually, um, and I've not actually experienced this before in my life. I, I've been around a lot of Europe and, and and other places, but it seemed to me, and I did kind of ask other people, it seemed to me that there is virtually no crime in Qatar or, or very little or virtually no crime. Um, so, for example, uh, I, I never got the sense walking down the street or in a shopping mall or anything of any kind of sort of physical threat or vulnerability or that one might be mugged or that, you know, there's tension that that, that didn't uh, exist at all. And then apparently this is is the case. And uh, one didn't get the sense that crime at all was a menacing uh, social presence. And, um, you know, I, I remember I asked what one guy why this was. And he said, oh, well, the, the, you know, there are cameras and things and people, you know, are aware that they might be uh, caught if they committed crimes. But I, I got the sense it was more than that, actually. It's not just fear of being caught. There was a sense that uh, a real sense that one could just leave one's property out. I, I, I remember in the Qatar uh, National Library, walking out, it's an incredible building, but I an extraordinary piece of futuristic architecture and a real pleasure just to sit there uh you know i'm like you know read books so i could, could live in that place um and i noted dotted around you got the tables you get you got some of the students have left their belongings there like there's a handbag and there's another thing there they clearly just gone out i don't know for lunch or maybe they're going to pray or something and then, but this 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 is kind of casual uh freedom just to not worry about your stuff being nicked <laughs> Now, you'd never do that in London or in Paris or in or New York, obviously, or, or anywhere else, because you'd be very worried about things being stolen. But the, people are not. Uh, and, and very, again, relaxed and uh, absence of fear of crime or, or anything nasty uh, happening. Um, so, yeah, I, and I, I was there. I, as I said, I just got back uh, this morning. I'm back here in London. Obviously, you can see my backdrop. Um and uh, the weather, February, apparently, uh, this time of year is the ideal time to go to that country. Later on in the year, July, August, it gets really, really hot, like seriously hot. And a lot of Qataris, they apparently leave, basically, and go to cooler climates. Maybe they come to, many of them, I think, come to London, actually. Um, so if you're ever thinking of going, um, the people are very friendly, and I know this is a bit of a cliche, but they really are, actually. There's a great adab, the sense of courtesy, good behavior, um, and an absence of aggression, which you get in some parts of London, other parts. Uh, it, I mean, Doha is a big city, and it's an urban, it has an urban environment, but still it lacks that tension that what one uh, experiences in the West. And it's really was worth going to this place just to experience, to say, the absence of uh dirt and it's very clean and it's very friendly and the absence of hassle and the the very modern nature and yet traditional islamic character as well of uh that city so i i do recommend it uh for a for a visit that there are many other things that doha is doing at the moment. i'm not going to go into those politically uh it's very much at the center of trying to uh, resolve uh, the terrible things that are happening at the moment, uh, but that's a different subject entirely. I just want to give you my subjective 
uh, impression of what it was like just to be there. And I think it's a great place to visit on holiday. There, there are lots of uh, some amazing museums, by the way. Uh, I could go into that, but I won't. Uh, and beautiful sea seashore line, fantastic restaurants. And um, yeah, it's just a cool place to, to hang out, really. So I do recommend it. And um, there we go. That's my uh, my reflections on my two week visit to Doha just finished till next time.